Hey, you already saw this. <laughs> Although he's been eating Benny's noodles, it looks like down there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it looks like we've got a little video. Someone sent us a video message. So let's go see what that is. Hey, how are you? Miles Eckhart. Friend over at Crusader said you've been building quite a rep. I run a modest security outfit, and I'm always on the lookout for capable people who don't rattle. If you're interested in picking up some extra work, we should talk. I'll send my details. Okay, uh, so looks like we got a new mission, possible security job. Uh, so we'd have to go to Levski to find out about it. So let's go over to our mission manager. All right, possible security job. There you go. So travel to Levski to meet with Miles Eckhart. All right, so let's accept that. And uh, let's uh, head out to the, the pad. For this mission, we're going to do sort of a mini multi-crow mission. So we have Chris over here, who is uh, going to partner Glenn and uh, be the pilot to uh, Glenn's all-performing action hero. <laughs> and you guys, uh, obviously, you guys know Alasar fairly well, uh, with its various Welcome shops and locations. To the Port Alasar ship deck. And luckily, Glenn slept in his spacesuit, so he doesn't need to get changed. Here we go. Uh, so Chris there waiting for us on the landing pad. Hello. Hey. Let's wave to him. There you go. Hey. So there you are. We switch between Chris and. All right. Okay, guys. Uh, back to uh, there we go. And let's let's get in our freelancer. So we thought it's about time to do a demo using a freelancer. Oh, that door didn't work before or something? Yep. Wow. All right, come on, there you go. All right. Okay, let's get in our co pilot seat and look over. There you go. Okay, let's. Uh, Okay, let's, uh, let's just head out. Landing gear up. Landing gear up. Landing gear up. Chris, look, uh, look over, Chris. All right, I'm back, sweet. Okay, all right, well, let's go back and let's uh, switch from our radar to uh, star map. So this is uh, this is an early work in this is an early work in uh, progress, and it'll be obviously much further along by the end of the year. Uh, but you know, you know the star map on on the uh, the web and uh, the capabilities and. Uh, visual qualities will be the same here, but this is obviously the Stanton system, and when we're navigating around in such a large area, you know, you can't really have a thousand nav mar markers, and so you're going to use your map for that. Um, you know, obviously we're by Crusader, and as, if we zoom into Crusader and then zoom in further, we can sort of see the moons and the different stations. So you'll be able to do all that. So let's uh, let's pull out a little bit. 
And it's going to be much snazzier and better than this. This is sort of our working program. We'll, we'll uh, and you know, if we pull out a little, sorry, pull out a little bit, uh, Chris. So, and then Microtech is where you'll see Hurston, Arcorp. And if you know the, the web map, you'll sort of know Stanton. But let's go to Del Delamar, which is uh, where Levski is uh, set and based. So uh, let's activate quantum travel. Double click on that. Uh, this is the upper orbit station uh, outside uh, Delamar, which, which is a uh, sort of rocky, small planetoid. Uh, and Levski aboard it is, a, well, originally it was an ab abandoned mining uh, town uh, facility, and it was sort of taken over by uh, the People's Alliance, which were a, a group of sort of uh, anti-UEE uh, kind of uh, polit political activists during the Mesa area. Um, and so since then, it's sort of evolved into a, a place free from sort of the, the boot of the UEE, so to speak. And if you kind of, you know, as long as you don't hurt someone else, you can do whatever you want. So it's, um, you know, think of it a bit more like Mos Eisley, perhaps, in terms of being a bit of a, a den of, um, of villainy and scum. So we'll just get a bit closer to lower orbit stuff. And uh, so in 3.0, we're demonstrating every planet, every moon uh, will be fully done, rendered, physicalized. You can land on any part of them, walk all the way around it if you want, if you've got uh, months to do that, because they're quite large. Uh, Delamar here is about 2,000 uh, kilometers in diameter. And you can actually see, if you look at the curvature, so we don't have any uh, clip range or draw range. So when you see something in the distance on the planet, uh, the horizon line is the actual real horizon line. Uh, so the guys in Frankfurt that are doing this, the uh, engine team. Uh, so they're, there's a, they're, they're, they're pretty genius. Uh, so, you know, Marco Cabetta and uh, Carsten Wenzel are sort of the leads of that. And uh, a lot of this is all their baby. So as we, you know, as we slowly pull down, we'll start to uh, enter the atmosphere, um, and as we sort of start to enter the atmosphere, you sort of see the atmospheric head come in, uh, and go us, and also... As we get down into the atmosphere, it switches to a more atmospheric flight model. So there is drag, there is some uh, small amount of sort of lift, uh, sort of aerodynamic modeling. So if you have a ship like the Gladius, you'll fly better than something like the Aurora. Um, so here we are, and anywhere on uh, Del Mar, we could land, get out, and walk. Uh, so as we fly down here, perhaps, uh, Chris, we could demonstrate and just land and get out somewhere, wherever you want. Um, hey Jared you want to go back to the front view for me yeah perfect Maybe do picture in picture, yep, there we go. So there you are, Glenn's opening up the back. Chris is bringing us down. And then let's go to uh, uh, Glenn's view, Jared. That's perfect. There we go, there we go, beauty. And like put out.
All right, who else is going to be a challenge? <laughs> see, we did land everywhere. Let's see if we get, can you jump up? I don't know if we'll be able to do it. Let's see. Jump. Uh, uh, jump. Uh. All right, okay. Chris is going to have to uh, land somewhere we can. He'll move a little bit so he can get in. All right. Uh, 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 no, no. I'm not sure you'll be able to make that. Let's see if you can. Hey! Okay. All right. Okay, well, that was an unscripted adventure for you. Uh, let's get back. Uh, and, like, head, let's take off and head into land at Levski. So, Lev Levski is, uh, like I said, it's a uh, sort of free town. Uh, and as long as you sort of respect their loose laws there, everything's okay. But they're not fond of uh, UEE folks there. You want to go exterior? So switch it. Switch it, Jared. No, no point of view, point of view, Jared. Uh, pilot, Jared. There you go. Okay. All right, so now we can either request or cancel a landing we wanted to, but we're going to request a landing um, from uh, the Levski control tower there. Eslin Macken is the character here. Landing pad assigned. Okay, so he's assigned the landing pad for us. And that's kind of how in uh, 3.0 we're going to have landing and the various different things because we're going to have to control traffic in and out. And so you'll get a landing pad, you'll land, and then you'll have a certain amount of time to get out of your ship. And then the ship gets taken away to a hangar, and then the landing pad's available for someone else to land, and the same happens for exiting. Uh, and uh, if you take too long, then the screen will fade to black and you'll be there in the airlock, uh, just so no one can sort of sit on the landing pad forever and prevent other aisles from landing. Um, all right, so let's uh, head down. You want to flip these, Jared? There you go, perfect, awesome. So like one of the big things is we went from Olasar, I think we traveled about a million kilometers to Del Mar. Now we've flown over the surface, coming here to Levski. Uh, and you know the goal with Star Citizen is to have a very structured, uh, but beautiful and tactile world and universe. So here we are, we've just checked out. And we've arrived. We've arrived at Levski. Um, so let's uh, let's go head in to Levski to uh, look for Miles Eckhart. And we're going to have Chris fly out, and we're going to show you something here in a bit, which is uh, kind of fun, but also shows the other big thing that I think is really important with Star Citizen is we are a, absolutely a multiplayer game. So you and your friends can adventure around in a huge universe. And, I, and for me, I think that's really important, um, especially when you, you know, try to have a, a, a big, detailed world. Otherwise, it gets a bit lonely. So here you are. Uh, you know, people's allowance of okay. respect local authorities. Peace wins every time. So definitely aging space if he's here. So let's head through the airlock uh, into...
Well, you've got to get in a lift now. We're going to go down. So here's an example of the item 2.0. So everything has an inner thought when you interact with us. We just call the elevator. And something to note in the elevators that we have um, in both Levski, actually they're in Grim Hex 2, is they're real elevators. So there's a whole elevator system that calls them. They move around in the um, physical space. Uh, OK, let's go to the lobby. And uh, so let's walk out. So here's the area. The lobby is basically these are lifts from the four landing areas you can come to. Welcome to Le Levski. Uh, so you can sort of see the, the feel, the character, the, you know, the grounding that we want in the world and the universe. Um, you know, here's a statue. Uh, remember Anthony Ta Tanaka, who was this kid that was uh, killed by Messerin forces back in the mess area. And he's a sort of symbol of defiance against the UEE. And therefore, it's quite, you know, it's a it's a statue they've had here to sort of symbolize their defense against the UEE. Um, and if we look out the window here, so we can see, there you are, that's the Levski that we came in throughout. And in fact, look who's looking in at us. It's, it's Chris. Oh, and look, we can zoom in and look, there's, uh, who's that? Glenn, you want to wave? There you go. So, uh, so there's, a lot of work that's gone into the tech to allow us to do this kind of detail at the same time, multiplayer, at this resolution, in and out. Uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's difficult. So, um, so here in, in all our sort of landing locations yeah, throughout um, Stanton and the rest of the PU, so there would be somewhere like we would go there to get our ship repaired. Um, the way that we're going to have to determine which area you would sort of respawn on essentially uh, would be whenever you land in a landing location you can go so here's a residential area and you can pay some money some credits to you know basically get your room like an easy hab on Port Alisar and then when you sleep in the bed that sort of says okay that's your checkpoint that you so then if I was flying out in space and I got killed I'd wake up in the hospital here in Levski as opposed to waking up in Port Alisar and that's how you would sort of put your markers around as you go around so let's call the elevator here I think we did right Glenn, yeah. So this is an example. I know you guys probably said, oh, Chris is just saying that the elevators here uh, like move around properly. But no, they really do. And some of them are slow, like real life elevators like this one. Um, but uh, so we'll sit here and we'll do go down. Chris is going to show off. But we're also going to take a look. If we look at Chris's view as he's looking around, you can actually see the elevator moving, right? So there you are. You see the elevator moving? Everything. Everything here in Levski is it's, it's, it's the same as our ships. We build it, there's no cheating, there's no teleporting to different areas. It's all physically correct. Elevators physically move, so we'll, uh, so we'll get out here. Um, the Grand Barter, and if we actually look at Chris's view, we can sort of see through his, so yeah, here we are again. And Chris is uh, somewhere here. He's coming around, there you go. which is, this is basically the elevator we came down, and there he is. So, and again, you can sort of see all the way in, and you can see the Grand Barter, and you can sort of see us, the player, right there, waving. Okay, so, Glenn, let's turn around, because we're going to go down to the Grand Barter Bazaar, because that's uh, where we're going to have to meet Miles. So, head in, let's go. Let's go down. Uh, all right, so, here we go. Uh, into the Grand uh, Barter Bazaar. So here, here we are in the Grand Barter Bazaar. And we look out. So like all the landing locations that we're going to have in Star Citizen, and this will be true in 3.02, is that they'll be selling different things. Uh, so you'll come to, say, Levski to buy things you can't buy in other places and go to Art Corp for this, you know, buy things you can get there that you can't get elsewhere. Uh, so, you know, here would be probably more counterculture stuff, uh, kind of like slightly you know illegal mods to weapons or stuff that you know you wouldn't normally get in sort of the authorized dealers uh, and uh, so this is a sort of bizarre market 
Gordy's in there would be where we would go and get armor and uh, that kind of stuff. And there were various different shops and stores around here. And this whole area... Good you are a person of good taste, I can tell. You know what to so we'll, we'll keep going. We don't... So the, the proper subsumption isn't in here yet, but with that in, we'll see people moving around, doing things, coming and going, have a lot more life. But the idea is to make all the locations that you go, depending on what their sort of population uh, would make sense are alive, have people All doing right. things. Tell your friends. Um, you know, carrying on their own little conversations, moving around. So you sort of feel like it's a living world, whether there's, you know, 50 other players there or there's just you. Um, so let's just head up here. We're going to find uh, Cafe Muzan, uh, which is uh, where Miles Eckhart is uh, hanging out. Go. And there you go. Looks like there's Miles there in the corner. Glad you could make it. Grab a seat. All right. Sorry for the locale. Don't look like much, but the homemade stuff has some kick. Anyway, a job came in late last night. Some idiot hauler cut through low sex space, got his crew vented. The company needs to retrieve the ship's black box to claim insurance on the lost cargo. Should be a romper job. Get in, get out. And all my people are tied up with bigger ops. So I figured I could use this as a chance to make a new friend. I'll send the details. Let me know if you're interested. So uh, uh, we can either accept or decline, but we're going to check the details first. So let's pull it up. So there's the log. So the mission that we can take is uh, the Dunder Sun Beam 4, which is a Starfarer. It's attacked by outlaws yesterday. Crew and cargo presumed lost. Uh, unfortunately, the pilot deviated from intended path into a monitor space and ill-conceived attempt to shave time off their route. That means Dunder shipping needs the black box data retrieved from the wreck in order to be reimbursed by an insurance company for the lost cargo. So the deliverables are black box data from the Dundon Sunbeam 4, and we'll be paid 3,000 credits for that. So uh, sounds like a mission we should take, so let's do that. OK. There you go. Let's accept. Great. Here's the tracking address for the ship. Let me know once you have the black box data. Okay, we have a new objective, retrieve the black box. So uh, let's head back out to uh, uh, the, the landing area and uh, meet Chris up and let's go look for a black box. And yeah, we're, we're kind of sort of speed running through Levski here, but there's a lot of other areas out here. There's a whole ventilation SAF system that goes in the back, and it, there's sort of catacombs and tunnels in Levski, and some of them won't be monitored, so you could perhaps um, get attacked. There's a hospital where you would wake up if you um, died in space. Uh, like I said, there's uh, conscientious objects over there with the various different things that you could buy. So there's a lot of different shops and things that you can do as you move around uh, in Levski or the other landing areas. All right, so let's just head up to the lobby and then Safely waiting for us outside.
head up to hangar three. As we're coming here, Chris is coming down to get us. A little quick. Oh, look at that landing. Brilliant. All right, let's uh, let's just check our let's check our mission. Uh, make sure we got everything sorted out here on the the mission scheduler. So okay. So we're uh, locate the star fragger right? Tree of the black box. Okay, cool. Hey, Chris, where are you? You didn't get us. You you left us. <laughs> no, we went forward. All right. We're just showing that it isn't on rails at all. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, let's get the back up. And uh, since we're going to be heading into unmonitored space, uh, Glenn's going to get in our back turret uh, to make sure that uh, in case we get attacked, we'll have all hands on deck. Uh, Jared, remember, we don't want to have the second monitor down there. There you go, thank you. We'll switch to it later. Um, OK, so we'll pull out here. So you saw in Pupil the Planet, but this is all real-time live while we're flying around. We just went to this incredibly detailed location. It's all coming in. Uh, so, as we are now. Okay, let's do the picture in picture that we lose that we didn't have. Uh, doesn't matter. Picture in picture. Jared, picture in picture. Okay. We'll start to head up, and once we've cleared the atmosphere, uh, which you'll see on uh, Chris's screen, uh, we'll be able to quantum drive. And you can see in the distance where Levski is with the four different landing pads, the various sort of mining towers. And again, like I said, this is all seamless. We're streaming in, we're streaming out. We're not, there's no loading screens, there's no nothing. So we're just heading through the atmosphere now. Again, you can sort of see the the scale and scope of the worlds we have. It's not small spheres, and there's no clip ranges and draws. It's, uh, so in terms of size and quality, we're really very happy with it. So uh, let's see, we cleared the atmosphere now. So yeah, let's give it a few more as we just get out. So we pull away. So we're now more into space. And uh, OK, let's uh, quantum try to the location we have for the staff error. So, location is one of the moon around Delamar. So, small asteroid field here. And that's the last known location that we're heading towards right now. Oops, a couple of pirates. So I guess it's time for Glenn to earn his, uh, his stripes in the turret. Uh, that's a nice shooting. Okay, one more. All right, come on. You'll go, Glenn. Uh, Chris, are you going to take all the glory?
Now, Glenn, shoot it. What's that? Come on, guys. All right. Missile. All right. Okay, he said the freelancer didn't kick some ass. Uh, and by the way, I don't know if you've noticed it, but the music's been sort of changing dynamically as we've been playing. So uh, you're actually listening to the first version of our sort of music logic system that fades in and out and depends on what's happening. Um, so I think we may debut that in uh, Star Marine, the 2.6 patch, but it'll definitely be in 3.0. Um, so here we are, we're coming uh, towards the Starfarer, which looks like it's uh, not come off very well. All right, okay, so let's get in the back, and uh, Glenn's going to open the back door. And so one of the other you know, great things about Star Citizen, you'd be walking around a space station, walk out, get in a space ship, fly a million kilometers, uh, land on a planet, get out, get a mission, get back in your ship, fly to an asteroid uh, little belt around the moon, and come across a space wreck. Uh, all seamlessly, all the rest of stuff. Going from one, one sort of operation on foot, FPS, EVA, space flight. Um, so it looks like uh, the, there's been full decompression and it's vented inside. Uh, you want to, yeah. And if we look at, yeah, you can see, we can see uh, through the dark. There you go. You can see little Glenn outside. Let's start EVAing. Uh, there we go. Should we follow him? Okay, back to Glenn and let's. Uh, Let's look for a way in uh, to the Starfarer. Wow, some pretty catastrophic damage. All right, let's let's look back and see. There's, there's Chris waiting for us. Oh, looks like we can get in this way, so let's head in here. So it looks uh, one of the crew member that um, unfortunately didn't do too well. Okay, let's just push him out of the way a bit. Let's head on. Let's try to find the the, uh, the captain's room so we can uh, download the black box. And so, if those of you that have a staff error, have hung out around a staff error, you'll appreciate that it's, a, it's a, you know, not a small ship. So we're just moving around here. Uh, see another crew member that had an untimely divide, just demise. It's actually uh, that heads the scanned version of uh, Kyle, who's one of our IT guys in uh, the UK office. So why don't you give Kyle a bump? Sorry, Kyle. <laughs> All right, let's let's head in. All right. Okay, we're downloading the uh, 
Flat box. Poof. Download complete. So there we are, objective complete. We retrieved the black box. We just made 3,000 credits. Uh, mission is now complete, um, the possible security job we had. And uh, we've just now got a video message coming in. So uh, let's, uh, let's listen to that, Glenn. Got the black box data and verified it. I'll send it off. Great job. No, I'm just gonna throw this out. But I ended up talking to a couple of contacts of mine. Turns out the pack that hit that ship are squatting in an old facility on that nearby moon. I'm just talking here, but it's not crazy to think that they're keeping the cargo there. These outlaws are scum, so it's not like anyone will miss them. And that company's gonna claim the insurance. So it wouldn't technically be stealing if you happen to head on down and take it. Again, I'm saying anything here. I'm just gonna send along a location on that moon and do what you want. So we have a new uh, additional message, reclaim stolen cargo if we want to take it. <coughs> so we can like pull up our mission uh, thing and uh, I think, why the hell not? What do you guys, you want us to go to the find the stolen cargo? Yeah. Right. Okay, let's, let's do it, Glad. There we go, all right. <laughs> okay, uh, all right, well let's, uh, let's find a way out of uh, the stuff area here. Heavy armor takes a fair amount of damage. All right, finally. <laughs> All right, okay, it's down here. We're in the cargo hold of the Starfarer. I think you guys know about the Drake Dragonfly then, obviously. <laughs> All right. So let's head back to the Starfarer. I mean, sorry, the Freelancer. Um, but yeah, so the, yeah, I probably don't need to introduce it, but the Dragonfly, uh, you know, we, I think, announced and sold a few months ago. 
uh, but it's our uh, yeah, first sort of space motorbike or space hog if you want to call it. And it has a dual purpose because it also have, it has a whole grav lev system. So when you're on a planetary surface, you're like a you know land speeder, um, uh, so which is pretty pretty cool. You never know that may be something that happens here in this demo. There you are, there's a uh, little Chris, Chris is there waiting for us patiently in the freelancer. <laughs> Can you look down, look around or something? Yeah, yeah. It's right. All right, let's kind of bring it in. Here we go, slowly. So we don't necessarily, your, your Dragonfly will just about fit in a Freelancer, but probably want a slightly bigger ship to fit him in than, than this. But yeah, let's bring him in. Da -da -da, here we go. Oh. Oh. There he is. So let's lock up the back door. What's that? that yeah, no, that actually did that 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 grass a graphical bug, and that, that's actually something we haven't seen in all our playthroughs. And that, but occasionally, when you take a a vehicle, a spaceship from inside a local grid of another spaceship out to the spa big global space grid into the local grid of another one, that's a degree of difficulty eleven. All right, so we're going to head to the moon to look for this pirate base. Uh, we're going to get on the Dragonfly. Alright, okay. Getting these things in and out of each other isn't always the easiest thing, so let's see what happens. Yeah, you're uh, decoupled. Oh. Okay, now you're coupled. You're going to... Uh, okay, let's... Couple and go into grab left mode. Right. Hang on, who's that? This. Let's do some firing. So here we are. So sweet. Get a first person view if you want. Yeah, that's good. All right, Chris, you should help out with the other dragonfly. So we want to cut you, uh, Jared. You want to cut to Gregor and his dragonfly? That's uh, player three, Jared. There you go, so this is Gregor here, playing uh, the black, he's flying a black dragonfly, up, oh, he got killed. All right, player one now, uh, back to player two, sorry. Player two, player two. There you go, perfect. 
play to. Red one, Jared, red one. <laughs> All right, so let's head to the pirate base. See where the rover is. The, is the rover still getting away from us? Oh, there it is. So uh, go to player four, Jared. Okay, b back to player two. Actually, all right, let's go after it. <laughs> go first person view. Uh, first person view, Melissa. There you go. No, you're, why are you ramming into the things? Go first person view. First person, so you know where you're going, but you're ramming into the thing all the way. Go around to, yeah. Oh, I mean, I guess that's, that's one thing you can do. <laughs> You're out of ammo. Chris, you may have to land and help out here. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I guess that's one way to get rid of pirates. Okay, so let's see what they were hiding here on the base. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. A big Betty's crate, as he always says. And uh, all right, let's take. Uh, so again, here's sort of an example of the uh, inner thought. So let's pick it up. There we go. So a little grabby hands action. So you'll be able to move and take things around, as, uh, as I've mentioned before. So let's take them out. Uh, you want to land, uh, land the freelancer, and then let's start loading up the, the, the cargo. Glenn walks very slowly. He doesn't want to drop the box. Look at that. Right, come out the back there. Let's just put the box down at the base here to Chris can go get it. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, hang on, we got an incoming video message. Let's check that out. Chris should come out and get the box. Hang on a sec. So, find anything good? If you don't mind, I'll just have a look myself. That doesn't sound very good. Don't know about that. Uh, what do you reckon, guys? Oops, a daisy. Looks like we got double crossed. Damn it! 
and it's the end of the demo.